Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. I am Ross Grieve, and we're going to sp spend the next hour um, talking about shooting portraits on location. Um, if you've got questions, um, please put them into the chat, and um, everyone at Lutminska will be able to get them over to me, and I'll answer them as we go through. Um, if you're like me, I always forget what questions I'm going to ask if it's left at the end, so feel free to pop them in the chat, and we'll get those done as well. Um, also, I want to mention um, a major reseller which, for this webinar, which is Wex, and they are kindly offering a discount code, which you will be able to see at the end of the webinar. So make sure you hang around and you'll get that code at the end as well. So a little bit about who is Ross Grieve. And actually, if I click on my screen, it'll make things easier as well. <laughs> So I am Ross Grieve. I am a New Zealander. I've been over in the UK for, gosh, it must be 25 plus years now. Um, I'm a portrait and commercial photographer. Um, and I now base myself in Wales. Um, I'm also a passionate street photographer. If you've seen my street stuff, um, that's a whole new webinar on its own again. But I am also a colour geek and I like um how how can i say because i learned on film i like producing beautiful colors and imagery and getting those skin tones perfect and even sometimes getting that real cinematic look so we're sort of going to go through lots of different things today but one of the things i hope you guys all do and you'll take away from this today is that um you should be printing because i'm a massive fan of printing and we we take so many images and we leave them on our devices we look at them on beautiful screens. Um, I'm editing here on a BenQ S271C, and it's like editing on photographic paper, which has actually kind of, some, kind of inspired me to print more as well. But being a photographer, that's how I make more money. I make more money by printing my stuff. Um, and it looks better, and you look at it every day. So a topic for this evening, shooting on location. Um, locations can sort of freak people out a little bit, but it, it's not very daunting because there are so many amazing locations in the UK, um, wherever you are or over the UK, that you can just go out and find those special places. And we're going to get deep into that quite deeply, along with lighting, sort of um, putting artificial light in, overpowering the sun, using ambient light and natural light. So we'll sort of go through all those. And this is all taken from the same shoot as well. So it's not taken over a series of days. It was actually taken over a shoot where we were incredibly stressed because we were moving the very next day. We had our dog with us as well, um, who you will see and uh, meet in the photos, and she was in the photos as well. Um, but then also I'll go into direction, um, and direction and posing are two different things, and I'll explain about that later. Composition, which is really important, what some people struggle with. It sounds simple, but they do. And then we go to the famous thing, do we do black and white or colour? Um, you know, what's that safety net? Um, and these are also terms you'll hear about, but we're going to see lots of images and talk about how they're made, how they were planned, how they were shot and achieved as well. So let's jump into it with locations. So when you're on location, you want to look around you and absolutely see what's going on. There's some great landmarks where you can shoot. And I try and literally spin around on the spot and see what's there. Um, this is the Millennium Centre in Cardiff. It's a quite iconic building with loads of uh, copper on the front. And at night, all those letters are lit up as well. Um, you'll also notice a lot going through my photography is that I shoot from a low angle just to try and get a look that's not at eye level. If you shoot at eye level all the time, I believe it comes quite ordinary. But if you start to lower or get higher or use a Dutch tilt, which you'll see some as well, then your in images come uh, quite more interesting to the eye and it draws people in. You create leading lines. If you look on the floor here, we've got leading lines going on. Now, there's someone walking in the background in a public place. I'm not too bothered about them because we can't identify them, so carry on. I could retouch them out. And if I really wanted to go to town, I could retouch all the banners out as well, or even put in my own type of banners. Um, 
but bean in Wales, red is a very complimentary color in Wales, and it's bright and it's vibrant and it's exciting as well. Um, the way I treat this as well, I always um, look for skin tones. So I will use a Kelly Bright color checker um, and I'll use that. So I'm not going to go into color management too much tonight because it's about shooting on location, but I use a color checker to get my skin tones right. And even when I haven't had the color checker there because I've left it at home by mistake, I've packed my bags wrong, I am human, that does happen sometimes. By having a good monitor, I, I can do that as well. But whenever you're doing um, your editing, look for skin tones um, and that will give you the beautiful look. So the next picture that you're going to see coming up is graded if you're doing film or it's got a slightly different preset or treated differently in Lightroom. So this one is more vibrant, um, the, the blacks are more deeper in it as well. Again, I've kept to the skin tones and you'll notice the swing bag or the handbag, I should say, um, has got movement in it. I wanted, that was my instructions to my model, is to swing uh, the bag because I wanted to show that movement. Now this is a classic, do we go black and white or color? And by just tapping um, the screen here, hopefully you, you, should, you should be able to see that it's gone black and white because I've just tapped it on the hot key. So we can just have a quick look at it. But we can go black and white of a color because it's got movement, it adds more, um, a, a more dynamic to it as well. Again, we, there is a slight distraction behind and some people may want to get rid of those signs behind or put a different background in. But the way like Photoshop is now, you can just cut your subjects out so simply because you've got quite a nice foreground there. And again, we've got leading lines going into it. Now, I talked about um, a Dutch tilt or looking around you. So this is literally, the next photo is literally within two steps of the Millennium Building that you just saw. So we've literally just turned to the right. And we've got the nice big Ferris wheel behind. And with the tilt, um, it just makes it a little bit more interesting. We've got the lines of uh, Non's leg uh, just pointing down. We've got the lines running up uh, of the of the pillars, and everything is sort of pointing and leading up and to Non's, Non's eyes as well. And I want you guys to look at the pictures as well. Um, I want you guys to look at the pictures as well and sort of see if you can figure out where the light source is coming from because I'm going to ask you guys later on, or even just pop in the chats if you think it is, um, where the light source is coming from. We're using artificial light um, in these outdoor photos because I just wanted to pop a bit of light in there because it was a, quite a flat day. You can see in the background, it's very gray. Um, there's no clouds or anything. So it's a really simple technique to do. And some people get um, a bit scared um, when they do this. Um, and they think I'm, I'm going to blow out the background or make it too dark or something like that. All you need to do, you take a meeting with your camera, look at your subject, and let's say we're shooting at 125th of a second at f f8. That's your reading. So then you knock your your aperture down to say f16. You're going to knock it two stops. So you go from 11 from 8 to 11 to 16, and then you're just going to bring in your fill to the appropriate layer. So I've got a question already from Nick. Do you use layers to only accentuate certain colors whilst keeping skin tones neutral? Um, no, I don't. I, I, if you look at my editing, and if we've got time, I'm, I may be able to show you. My uh, editing is very, very quick. Um, there's there's lots of um, there's there's lots of different big pound sorry all my questions are just flying through now um, when I edit it's very, very quick and I do look at skin tones that's the most important thing to me um, I don't build things up in layers I'll just use a preset and my levels in Lightroom and that's all I will do um, and that keeps my skin tones I've kind of swinging towards a real cinematic look at the moment because I was completely obsessed with Joker. Um, with Joaquin Phoenix in it, and the color treatment in that to me was just incredible. And how they used color to um, create dark and moody scenes, and light and cheerful, and 
it was just so cleverly done that I'm quite obsessed. I'm trying, there is a slight sort of green, maybe you'll see coming into some of my um, images, um, but I'm still trying to keep that skin tone. Um, so that's really, really Im important to me. And that's sort of like my own personal development as well. So again, we're in the same location and we're, I'm sort of standing on the same spot and I'm swinging around 180 degrees. So right to this picture here, we've got the classic reflection. Excuse me, I didn't actually <laughs> realize the cone was there until I saw the poster, um, but hey, I am human. So this is the classic, it's filled in with um, flash, so we're getting a bit of bounce off the mirror onto Non's face. And I wanted the split mirror going down because it's quite cool. It's sort of airy, again, it's split mirror, but this is artificially lit again. So I'm able to sort of drop the background down, get rid of those um, colors in the background and really bring out uh, really bring out those vibrant colors and the reds, which you want to see, as well as the traffic cone, which I was going to point out pretty quickly. Um, so a question from Simon. Um, can I show us the amount of kit and bag I take on location? Um, I can, and you could probably, you can, you actually view the full video of this um, shooting on location on my YouTube channel. I'll give you the link at the end and you'll be able to look at a review as well. Can I carry everything in one go from my car? Yes, I use one light. I'm using one camera and I'm using one lens on this shoot. That's all I'm using. In fact, you'll see some of the kit I'm using coming up. Um, and for Bob, no, I don't use gels at all. Um, too much faff for me. Um, it's just purely natural. And the color profile, which I use on my camera, is standard. So it's uh, pretty flat and I like the results I get. In fact, this one, is some photos coming up which are straight out of camera. So this bit of video shows you the angles I will go to to get the shot and create the leading lines. So you'll see the Millennium Center in the background there. And I'm actually just mixing two cameras in. And you can see, I haven't read this. Some things I've left in delivery so you can actually see what they're like. So normally I'd go in and I'd retouch out a handbag, which has been dropped on the floor there. Um, and I would darken that down a bit. I'd crop in a bit more so I don't get so much of the edge and it's just the mirror behind because I like that sort of runaway look behind. It's it's really cool for me. Um, the the lights I'm using, guys, as well, it's an Allen Crom um, ELB 400, so it's a portable kit, and I'm just using that 400 with a 90 mil, a 90 centimeter deep octa, and that's all I'm using outside. And you'll see that um, in one of the clips coming up soon. So when you get down and you create those angles, and you can see, I've actually cropped this. And if you look at the bottom of this image, um, that's where the light is, and I'm basically relying the wind kicked up at the right time. Just look into look over there for me non. You can see the light is above her as well, which is creating these beautiful contours and shadows. We've got the leading lines going right up the um, the structure there, which is just like a, a monument. Uh, it's actually a water fountain, which normally there's water spilling down here, but it looks really, really cool um, to use. And then we've got the lean lines of the arms going up. The arms are deliberately put in that situation to run up the building. So think about these things as well. Her right arm, or if you're looking at the photo, her left, her actual left, but her right arm is almost the same angle as the top line as well. So you've got that optical illusions. What I, Peter has just asked me, would I use a reflective instead on a sunny day? Um, yes, I would. Um, that would depend on, the, there's advantages and disadvantages of using a reflector. Um, if I want to create a sun look, which is in this photo, a reflector would need to be below. Um, a reflector is not going to really uh, give me that power that I would um, have if I've got off um, a light. I'm actually holding my hand up here as if I'm holding a light. But I wouldn't get the power out of a reflector that I do get out of um, of, a, of um, the LB400. Um, what classic uh, one straight away? I did say I was using one lens. What is it? It is I shoot on Lumix, and this was shot on the GH6. 
and this also was using their noctichrone, which is a 42.5 1.2. So in full frame terms, that's an 85 mil lens. So beautiful portrait lens. It's a prime lens. So your legs are your zoom. So I hope that helps you, Nick. So this shot I wanted to show you as well. So we're talking about leading lines and just getting an idea of different locations. Now, um, this is actually shot inside, as you can see, and I'm going to ask you guys later what you think the light source is for this, because I'm not going to tell you now, but um, I want you to sort of think about that, have a look at it, and sort of get an idea what you think the light source is. Now, what I really like about this is I like negative space, and you'll see that in some of my images. Um, I, it's good for um, publications as well. Editors like it if they're doing a double page spread. They can use that to go into their um, into double page spread and they put text across it and they love all that. It looks beautiful and the text and the image all come together. It's also nice for wall art as well. Um, people like that. So it's a really, really good idea to do it. Not everything has to be bang center um, and you can create a lot of interest and lead in. Um, to it. And remember, not every country or every nationality reads from left to right. So get start thinking like that and your images will start becoming more creative as well. And don't be afraid to try things because by having and shooting on um, digital formats, because I learned on film where you would go, right, I've got 24 or 36 shots I can get, maybe I'll squeeze 37. Now, you're only limited by the size of your card. So it's practice, practice, practice. I'm not saying go out and spray and pray. I want you to go out there and actually think about what you're going to photograph because I'm the type of person, I'll photograph it. Once I've got the shot, I'll move on. Um, and, and that's a very sort of organized way I, I work. So we've got a nice, I'd say, eye level shot, which we were talking about before. Now we move to something more dramatic. So still inside but wow you've really gone for that that turn out now i've changed lenses here as you can see i think if i remember correctly this was a 12 mil lens um just to get that nice wide um dip and by putting the shoe close to camera it just creates a really nice perspective and again we've got those lines so it goes up non's leg goes to her then her hands on the back wall the walls um going up I'm staying in exactly the same position on for the black and white image. And then we can see sort of non pushed in the corner. And this is actually just outside the toilets um, at a cinema. And the cinema was amazing to us. They gave us a free reign of it for the day. And, you know, we've got a really good relationship with them. And that's the thing about it as well. When you're shooting on location and people are letting you use their property, really respect that property because um, they're welcoming you into their place. And I know from doing weddings in the past um, that you will go in following week into a church and then you, the um, vicar may have an issue with you taking photos because someone's ruined it for you the week before. So really respect um, where you're shooting, especially if you're inside. And that also applies for me when you're shooting on the street. So that's that's pretty much locations covered, but we can come back to that and your questions, keep those questions coming about that. So now we're going to jump into lighting. And lighting really, really excites me um, because you can be so creative with it. This is my lighting setup um, for the day when we're overpowering the sun. You can just see a little bit of cloud break in there as well. So like I said, this is an ELB 400 Allen Crom with a 90 mil uh, softbox. Um, and again, I'm down shooting nice and low. And this was just show, taken just to show you guys what it is. If you look on the right hand side of the image, you'll see and the millennium sensor still there. So that's directly behind us. So from the first few photos that we looked at, we've literally just moved around 180 degrees and we shot quite a lot there as well. Um, and then getting down really, really low. I'd gone to the I think I've gone to the 12 mil for this as well, just to get that line going straight up. And you can see at the bottom where the crop is not, which you saw in the other one, you can see the light coming in. So it's, it looks really low, but it's actually quite high. If I just go back, you can see how high it is. 
and because of my perspective and I'm shooting down low, it creates this interest and we've got the beautiful leading lines um, and the hands and the hair flowing. So that's it's really, really simple. And remember those two stops if you want to darken down it and then just bring your light in. You don't have to blast your subjects and think of that as well. Um, I'm very conscious of having a light close to someone and I wouldn't want to have that light on full power because I don't want them to be dazzled or anything. I want, I want that my model to be very comfortable with what we're shooting because we're going to be shooting for a few hours. So you don't want to have your um, uh, your light on full power. One, it's going to drain your battery very, very quickly. It's going to, two, it's going to annoy your model. And I don't believe your images are going to be that great. Um, if you're going to have the light source further away, yes, then you've got a bit of license there. But when you've got it really, really close, just be a bit considerate. So when we're shooting like that, and I told I talked to you guys earlier, how do you tell an image is lit? What do you look at when an image is lit? The simple thing, you look in the eyes. And this is what I was talking about before also with the color treatment on this. This is where I'm sort of going into my cinema sort of feel. It's a slight green tinge on this. Now, you guys are all looking at this on different monitors. I'm looking at this on a calibrated monitor. Um, you may be looking at it on phones, tablets. Your monitor is a different make. Um, so it's all, you may see slightly different colors. Also, it's just running through a webinar software as well, so that's going to alter, alter it. But the key thing, if you look, open a, a magazine and you want to know how they shot it, look straight into the eyes. Um, they can fool you sometimes, but normally, say a classic beauty shot, it'll be a, a light up the top and there'll be a reflector underneath so they get that beautiful light on the face. This one here, um, if someone wants to put in the box how they think it's lit, I'll pop it in there straight away. But what's really careful is how you get the light going across your subject. Now, if you get your light going across your subject, um, that is, I don't know, going to result in the outcome. So if you look at the pole, we've got the pole going straight up. You can see the light wrapping around there. It's a nice wrap around light. So some people may be starting to think, oh, that may be um, an artificial light. She's got a nice highlight in her eyes there and it's flowing down her hair. It's picking up a hair light. Has he got one or two lights? This is only natural light. There is no artificial light added into this whatsoever. It's available light. To uh, Non's left, there is a big open window and it's just flooding across and we're towards the back of the room um, and it's night. Almost, I'm one light camera left, head height. It does look like that, I'll give you that, but it's not. Um, it is natural light coming from a big window. So you can be fooled sometimes and it is easy to be fooled on how an image is lit. And I'm going to show you a full length image and it'll help you process it a bit more. And again, this is about getting up and down and also using the rule of thirds in this one. Well, I've, I've kept a nice height in this because I didn't want to make it sort of less uh, interesting. So if we go sort of full length and you can see like simple lighting lets you think about the image. And don't rush into the image. Once you've got it, just sit back and look at it. Take, take in what you're about to photograph. You don't have to blast off 5, 10, 15 images. You can just take your time and just enjoy what you're about to photograph. Now, we look at leading lines again. I know I bang on about leading lines, but it's so important. We've got the wall. We've got the seam running down uh, Non's uh, jeans, and her toe is pointing towards me. This is all deliberate. The pole there, everything is deliberate um, to make it more aesthetically pleasing to, to the viewer and to the eye. And it works really, really well. Now, Non is, is quite tall. She is about 5'9", so that helps as well. But for smaller people like myself, who is vertically challenged, 5'8", um, this would make me look a bit taller as well, shooting from a lower angle. So those are things to consider if you want to make people look, you know, fantastic and tall if they want to be tall as well. So remember, simple lighting lets you think about the image. So we've gone in there. I could have used artificial light, but I chose not to because the light was so beautiful in there, there was no need to. 
So we're still in the same location and now we're starting to incorporate ambient light. Um, this is my dog, Bird. She is uh, almost 14 months now and she's absolutely beautiful. Um, and she was a bit of a star on the show there. She was so, so good. Um, so here I've just gone for again, vertical, but just bringing the knees together like that as well. Um, makes it nice and interesting. And then just using the pillars of light either side and just allowing the ambient light to flood in. Again, some people will be pleased. I am using available natural light here. So natural and a mix of ambient light and it gets a beautiful warm feeling. And just so you know, this is straight out of camera, this image as well. Um, so nothing has been done to it. Um, what I probably would do, I would go in and I'd probably just alter the vertical so they're nice and straight. And that would probably be all I would do to it. Excuse me. So we're looking at how interesting they can be. We've got a um, we've got an animal in there which can be a nightmare as well. And we had to have the lead on her because she was still a puppy and she would wander off. Um, but you can incorporate that into your image and still make it look strong. Some people may want to retouch it out. I'm not bothered by it. Um, six months time, ask me the same question. I'll probably want to retouch the lead out. So we've got those lines going there. And then we sort of look at, OK, if we just change the pose and direction, how strong is that going to be? And we're still talking about lighting here. Boom, that's high impact. That's natural light again. Um, the eyes, if you can look into the eyes here, you'll see two window, two highlights in Non's eyes. And that's coming from the windows to the side. Um, there's like two floor to ceiling windows. So it looks like strip lights in her eyes, but it's not, it's actually um, just available light. Now, I've just got down nice and low again. So I'm not at head height. I'm at about waist height. And we've got those that vertical line. Um, birds decided to go, um, go to sleep. Um, and that's made things easy. Um, Simon's asked me a question. Did I consider retouching the left hand band so it's tip match the gold tip on the right? I need to go back to that, Simon. Um, did I consider retouching the left hand band so that tip? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, no, that doesn't really bother me too much, if I'm honest. If you're look, talking about the lights, I could just copy and bring them across, but I, I don't want the full symmetry, but I did say that's straight out of camera anyway. But sorry, going back to the black and white image, I do appreciate images as well, uh, your questions as well, keep them flooding in. There's lots to go through. The black and white image pops on this because, because of the lines in the background. Sometimes we look at color too much and we don't even consider looking at it in black and white. I'm a massive fan of black and white. Um, and I love printing in black and white. I have my own images around the house. They are a mix of color and black and white. But when I did this black and white conversion, and these are all my own presets, um, it just blew me away completely. And just behind Bird, the puppy there, there is a plug, which you'll see in the next shot, because I didn't want to retouch it. So I just placed it there. So if you don't, if you're going to save your time retouching, that gives you more time to go out and take images, to view images. Um, the only thing I'd probably change on this is probably bring in the left hand side a little bit, um, just so the backgrounds are more even. I could even get rid of the pillars and have the lines going all the way across. There's lots of variables you can do, but initially really happy with how that looked. So we're sort of looking at levels and how we were talking before. Remember, this is available natural light blended with ambient light. So I'm not sure, again, what you guys are viewing on, but you'll see the highlights in Non's eyes just make her eyes pop. And she has got incredible eyes as well, uh, and that does help. She's very relaxed, and it helps working when you know the model as well, and you have a good relationship, and they understand what you mean, and they will give you feedback so you can sort of bounce off each other as well. Bird's just woken up as bored. You can see the plug just behind her now, which you didn't see in the previous photo. Now, this is taken about eye level, which you talked about, which is, it's an okay shot, nothing too spectacular. And you get a bit lower down and you get a much more dynamic shot. 
and that was pretty much that is straight out of the camera these two shots and that was just to sort of demonstrate to you just between the two levels if you get down low and you make those, those shots um, more dynamic it's going to create more interest if i was going to do it as a safe shot and save that i'd retouch uh, bird out or just make life easier i would have moved her out the shot as well so that's lighting in a, in a roundabout way on how i light so it's, it's a mix of uh, it's a mix of uh, available light, it's a mixture of artificial light, uh, and a mixture of ambient and and, and uh, ambient and natural light. So it's something that everyone can do. It's, it's not difficult, it's just practice. And that's all it is. Once you get to know your equipment and practice with it, it'll all become apparent. So direction. Now, direction and posing are two very different instructions. Posing is about the fine details and corrections and hands and how someone may stand. Direction is more of a please stand there in that position with your head that way. And then from there on, you're going to go into posing. Okay, so we're going to just deal with direction first and let you touch on that. So here I am, um, and this is the image which we shot from direction, as you can see, um, just mirroring me to give a bit of direction as well. If you mirror with someone, it's very easy for them to follow you. And you can use this in direction as well as posing as well. Um, because if you go up to someone, try not to get into their personal space. Allow them that freedom that you just want them to mirror you. Because as a human, you'll automatically follow someone. You don't want to go up to someone and grab their head and push it to the side and up and down, all that sort of thing. That's, that's a crossing the line in, in my view. So just use that simple technique of following the hands up, down, the eyes, and just communicate and you'll get some really cool looks. So it's simple to do. So you can get the legs up nicely in lines. The legs and the arms are the same angle as well. We've got the vertical lines going through from the blocks and we've got the uh, from the blocks behind and the horizontals from the steps. So that brings that all in together. So that's just a light touch on um, direction on how to do it and how to do it effectively. So let's sort of jump into posing where we can sort of dive into this a bit deeper. So as posing as we saw in the last image, um, uh, which was under light and everything, you can get some really strong poses just by bending and straightening legs and things like that and having the most gorgeous dog who just wants to steal the show. So by allowing a model to be creative and everything, that allows you to think on the spots and you can even go back to your model and go, that's amazing, can you do that again? And again, you can see I'm using hand signals to sort of direct uh, non my model and show her which way I wanted to move. And she understands the way I, um, I move as well because we've worked together as well for so long and she, she reacts and she'll automatically break into and, and create these looks that I want and she preempts me as well. Um, do I, Simon just popped a model, uh, a model, <laughs> Simon just popped a question in. Do I, do, do I direct the public, inverted commas, ordinary people in a different way from my professional models? Um, do I? Yes, because a professional model um, knows what to do. Um, the non in the photos here is actually my partner. She's not a professional model, so but she knows how I work. Now, if I'm shooting a wedding or I just a normal everyday person, yes, you have to sort of, um, you know, cut them a bit of slack. They don't know how to have their photo taken where a professional model does, and that's what you're paying them for. So. But if you have that interaction again with an ordinary person or a client or family member, you, you need to sort of interact with them so they understand you and just be clear in your communications and that will help. So in the next photo, I hope that answers your question. In the next photo you'll see, which is one of my favorite photos, is we talk about mirroring again. And all I've done, and this is in the cinema, and, I've, and this is just lit by the available light in there as well. So I've just asked Non, just put your hands up, just like this, and then she's just put her legs up onto 
the chair there and I absolutely love the look because we've got all that beautiful space around the ambient light and when I shot it um, obviously it was a lot lot warmer so this was made cooler just brought it back to the skin tones and the and the colors of the denim and we get that beautiful sort of isolated look she's just looking straight at camera I love that film. I'm leaning up against the wall. I'm actually up on the stage where the screen is, leaning against the wall because it's quite a slow shutter speed. I can't remember what it was to be precise, but it was a slow shutter speed and it's just got that beautiful, relaxed look. Oops. So we, we looked at this one earlier. And again, we look at the posing. Hands, if you can get good at hand posing, it'll make your images go to the next level it sounds really simple i know but if you think of think of anything that bends bend it so fingers you want them bent the wrist you want it bent you want the arms bent it's all the way going up so rather than having the back of a hand the side of a hand and the fingers look much more beautiful no one's got beautiful long fingers and hands and everything so she knows how to pose because of having to work with knees as well lesser so she's Got these beautiful hands and pose, but that's nice and it's a nice soft look as well. And just by rotating the shoulder towards me as well, and just lean the head into the door, it creates that nice shadow just running down her face as well. And we looked at this photo earlier, um, and think about this as well. The pose will complement the location. So by having a pose with a straight leg. Um, what complements the woodwork on the on the wall, the pole, everything works together because we're looking at verticals. So we've got three verticals. We've got the wood, we've got the jeans, and we've got the grey pole. And they all come together and they work together. So it's pleasing to look at. Now, if her, if we had Non's leg sort of bent or up in the air, it would just look unusual and odd. And you wouldn't like how it looked. It would be distracting and you wouldn't enjoy that feel at all. Um, so, I mean, it's important to get those factors right and think about looking around your whole picture. So if you look around your whole picture, the pose will complement the location. Let's just think of that, that phrase because it works for me. So when I'm taking photos um, of people, I like to sort of look how the light is reacting. And in this photo I was looking at, it's almost there. Now, what I mean by it's almost there, the right hand or the if you're her actual left hand side of face but if you're looking at the photo her right hand side of the face is quite dark um i don't want to push it too much more because it'll it'll be too hot on her arm and on the side of her face so the simple thing to do do i move the camera or do i ask my model to turn towards me more and just push her shoulder back so we're just pushing her shoulder back and turning around a little bit more now we'll just pop back to the arm. You'll be able to see the difference. So sort of a more soft shoulder and a more shoulder pop back. It's a much stronger look. Looking straight down, you've got both eyes, the colour, and I've graded this ever so slightly going with that um, ambient look. This is lit by the daylight windows. You can sort of see one of the daylight windows behind, and it's all available light. There's no flash or anything going on inside these uh, inside ones. And you would think, Oh, you're shooting inside. You must you must be putting artificial light there at some stage. I didn't because the light in the venue was so good, and I was just so on my element. I actually forgot about my lights. So that's that's how that sort of worked out for me. Um, so that's worked quite nice. Again, we talk about lines and going down. We've got verticals behind, and her arm leads up into um, her face. We could argue. I could crop out. I could have moved the the plant there as well this was I was trying to work incredibly quick here and also the fact that um, I was I had a dog to worry about and uh, there was lots of stress things going on in this shoot believe it or not but these challenges these these shoots do challenge us um, one pose which I think you need to be really sensitive about and do correctly is either a profile and there is a rule here that is broken but I think it works because Non has such a nice profile. Um, some people say the nose should not break the cheek. 
Um, and in this case, it does. And some people would also say, don't have a hand up and get an armpit. But it's a really strong image. Um, the way the light is running down and highlighting. I like how we can just see her tattoo on there, uh, on her arm, on her forearm. And the contours of her face, how the light just shimmers down. And it just works really, really well. And it shows the tone on her arms and everything. It works beautifully. Um, we've got the ambient light in the background. And it's just one of those moments. Sometimes you'll take it, you'll think, I'll risk it, and I'll see how it works. And if it does work, that's great. So again, we've gone for a next photo. We've gone for a slightly similar pose. Arm on the other side. Birds play ball. She's just looked in. Non's looking towards the light source. And we look at that nice, strong pose with a leg almost um, out wide. So Brian's asked a very good question. Sorry, I didn't explain that very well. So what I mean by nose, uh, Brian's asked, can I explain the nose breaking the cheek, please? Absolutely. So if you're having a portrait taken, normally if the nose is sticking out past the back cheek, that means the nose is breaking the cheek. Some people prefer to have the nose within the back cheek, and that is like the Grand Masters and things like that. Uh, that's how they will look. So if I just go back, so the nose is within the cheek here, and but normally it's about being right inside the cheek. So this is almost a full on profile because she's looking to her right, um, and the nose is protrude, protruding beyond the cheek. That's what that means. Hope that explains that, Brian. So we're going for the long poses again. Put that in. Get, go for the, this is what I call a power pose. And that's how I would communicate that to Non. I'll go, let's do that power pose, get the leg out, nice long legs, um, hand up, it's a power pose. She's got this nice serious look looking out there. And then next photos, more relaxed, um, more coming. Dogs not posing how you would like to, but remember you're working with animals. Um, and you can see Non's sort of holding that leg quite tight because she wants to go. So it's not too much of a relaxed photo compared to the next one where we looked at black and white. Again, power pose. Dog's gone completely to sleep. Of course you would because you want a power look. I would, ideally, it would have been better if Bird, the dog, was sitting up looking straight at camera as well. But she was a puppy. We couldn't get her to do that. So I really like this long power pose with the verticals and it just sort of breaks up the verticals as well and to me that that's really really important so composition what does my head go through about composition and lots of people have different views about composition composition to me is when you look through the lens and or on the back of your phone wherever you're taking you look in the center everyone looks in the center of that photo and if you run your eyes around all four corners, then you will see the rest of the photo. And that allows you to have a really nice composition, level it up, get your verticals right, and create images like this. So I've looked at this photo. I wanted her, I wanted none to the left. I wanted the verticals going straight up. I wanted to have a lot of negative space. And that's how I composed it. So, um, as I said before, not every photo has to be bang center. This is slightly off center, or verticals are slightly to a tilt, but you've got that sort of, I talk about lean lines, I know, but we've got the light source, and you can see the light source above, which is available light source, and it's just sparkly on our eyes. And I, every photo I do take of a person, I try to get a light source in there, whether it's daylight, um, Again, that's where your reflector may come in. Uh, if you haven't got a light source, you can use that to create a highlight if you haven't got a light with you. But just using that available light source and getting that highlight in the eye just gives soul to the image as well, gives power to the image. So low angles and leading lines. When you're talking about composition, get down, get low, don't be afraid because a lot of cameras now got pop out backs, so you don't have to be lying on the floor like we have to. You can look at what's going on. And then, of course, with mirrorless cameras, you actually see what you're taking before you take the image. You can even have it in, shoot in RAW, 
shoot in black and white so you have a black and white jpeg so you can actually see what that's going to look like as well i tend to do my black and white conversions post which means i do everything in lightroom afterwards that's just the way i prefer to work some people like to shoot everything in camera black and white or whatever profile they like to shoot um, again i shoot with a a standard profile which is the most blandest profile is the best way of explaining it and my cameras and then i feel i'm allowed a bit more freedom that rather than shooting something vivid um, and i can add vivid images to it if i want to so give that a go go high as well um, if you want to and, and use a boom pole so i've got a boom pole which i put a camera on as well so i can get up really high um, a three meter boom pole and you can trigger it either via self timer or by wireless if your camera can do that and just get some really interesting images by doing that and that's another cool way of almost giving yourself a, um, a fixed drone if you like so we're going back to this image as well and talking about composition we talk about composition with the lights either side and non's bang in the middle the dog is slightly off to the right which creates interest um we've we've thought about uh, the composition and how low down she is. I wanted to include um, the lights. My camera is actually on the floor. Um, and as you can see, the leading straight into this, my camera should be straight on the floor and I get this beautiful aesthetic look and the light coming in again is natural. And it's just very simple to do. And I may say that, but again, practice, practice, practice. Now, if we move up to head height, you can see the difference from moving from the floor. I think if I'd shot this at floor level, it would have been a much more dynamic image, would have been a stronger image. It's still a strong image because of the power pose going on um, and with the arms going on. So the, the, four, the, the top of the arm is the same angle as the leg going on. These are all things going that I think about. So I want those angles matching is the uh, her right or her actual left arm is matching the her left leg so that's going on as well so that's that works that's important remember rule of thirds if you know some people uh, a lot of people will know what the rule of thirds are and some people won't so i'm going to really lightly touch on the rule of thirds so rule of thirds is imagine your screen is broken up into nine little blocks and a third, a third, a third going vertically, a third, a third, a third going um, up the screen uh, horizontally. Now, if we look at this image here, so I've used um, I've used half of it as well, <laughs> rule of halves if you like, but this sort of like two thirds of it is taken up by the pillar, and maybe a third is taken up by non, and 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 the other is taken up by the wood. So. A third, a third, a third. So I said, sorry, I said two thirds. So a third from the wood, a third for non, and a third for the pillar. So that's breaking that vertical up into the thirds there. So you want to maybe have um, a subject in one space, your, uh, and because she's in the middle, um, and you want to have the uh, the environment in the other two thirds. Whereas the top two thirds of this is almost negative space there as well. If we go to the next one, and this is a really good example of rule of thirds. So there's a lot of negative space. Non is, bound, is down in the, the sort of bottom third corner, if you like. So imagine there's just lines going across there. She's kind of in, her head is in the two thirds and her, the right hand side is in one third. So the rule of thirds helps with your composition as well. And it's also gonna help you um, create better images, create those leading lines. And I'm gonna also take you in to how I sort of edit some of my images as well. So you're gonna see some of these images before they're edited. And this is in Lightroom. Sometimes um, my uh, computer is, which is gonna be replaced soon, or have, uh, have a hissy fit because it doesn't like it. So just bear with me while I bring Lightroom up. So hopefully you should all be seeing my Lightroom now. So. If we look down the left hand side, you'll see all my presets. So I create all my presets and you'll see my new one there, which is called Cinema. So I'm just gonna dive into any one of these, which um, one we may not have seen. Here we go. So 
So I haven't done any work on this at, at all, even though it says it, I can't really recognize what's going on. There's a little bit of exposure, I've pulled the exposure back, the highlights. So this is what I will look for, and I'm just pulling the highlights back, just for the skin tones, shadows, and color temp. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of white and a slight tint, slight tint of green. And that's all that needs. And I'm all the time I'm looking down this arm at her skin tones. Now, if I look at Non's face, I'd say it's probably a little bit too green. But I just want to pop a little bit of magenta back in there just to get rid of that green. And maybe a little bit of vibrant. I think that's looking all right. So let's just see if we'll load. So hopefully that you should see that full screen. And that's that's pretty much how quickly I will do uh, my editing. So on one of the ones that we saw earlier, my black and white processing, um, let's go for the power poses. You won't have seen some of these images. So I'm going to, um, yay, that was almost the end of the shoot. Um, and she had worked so hard, bless her. Um, so let's just choose one randomly. Let's go power pose. So a nice strong look going on there. We don't have to worry about the dog. So we're going to go down to my black and white studio. And that's, and you're more than welcome. If you want to have a look at the presets on here, you can write them down, take a screenshot, that's fine. What I think about when, um, with screenshots and stuff like that, remember your photography may look different with my presets, but you're welcome to, to try them. If, if we go into cinema mode, and it's a very, very subtle look here, you can see the difference. And I've just, I've spent a little bit of time tweaking them, but these were created for these lighting situations as well. Um, even going to my somber modes. So there's quite a lot that you can do. Um, now, if we go back to our beautiful colors here, you can see on the right hand side, I've done virtually nothing. So we're going to bring this one in and we're going to play around with it. And I'll just show you again how quickly I move. So I wasn't quite good with my verticals there. I was trying to be a bit clever and do an opposite and have a sort of quite a big floor. Again, room for text. So that's my space. Um, if I just brighten this up a little bit, remember it, it's a natural light source. I always go through my highlights, see what I can do, shadows, and I'm literally just looking, because remember, I am looking at a calibrated screen. And that's all I need to do, maybe just bring that down a fraction, exposures up a little bit. If I was doing this on my keyboard, I'd be hitting plus and minus for my exposure. Um, that's the quickest way to do it. Again, that's all I will do to my images. And we'll just load that. And that's simple as that. You don't need to do too much to your images to make them look great. Once you start messing around with images over and over, I think that's where the trouble starts to begin because people overcomplicate it and they want to make the images look um, like someone else's. And it's not really the way it's being shot. So you really need to think about the way you're looking at the images. So hopefully, you should be able to see the screen here as well. Um, if you look up at the thumbnail of mine, so you'll see my sort of setup here. This is what you want to get on board with as well, your color checker. Um, let's just go. Now, this is what this is what it looks like um, in Lightroom, but what does it look like in Premiere? If you're not into video, this is what I use to edit all my films. So I'm editing on a hybrid monitor here, so that's why this makes things easier. So this is what I work with when I'm editing my films. Um, and you can check out the film, the location films on my YouTube channel. There's also a review on the monitor, but if you want to see the full sort of um, uh, shooting on location, it goes for about two or three minutes. So, you know, it's it's put the kettle on, the kettle will be ready when, when you're finished with it. So you can get a good idea of how film sort of runs um and how things look 
and simple and how everything comes together. And this is just part of the movie you'll be able to go and have a look at. But it's the same sort of principle. When I'm looking to grade things uh, in here, I just want to go in and uh, do my color. And it's the same principle when you're doing film. You go in and explain your highlights, your color temperatures. So that's quite, that is very, very warm. I want to bring that down a bit. I want to look at the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, my whites, blacks. Um, so I'm trying to get that little snake going on. And that's really how I, um, how I treat my images. So just going back, um, all going well, if I can bring this back up. So if anyone's got some more uh, questions, pop them in the box now. Um, and also, if you're looking at stuff, guys, if you're looking for um, a power bank promotion, Calibrite are all running one at the moment with Wax, um, where you will also get a free Allen Crom power bank um, when you purchase any color checker device. That's absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't mind one of them. So make sure you check that out at Wax and you can. Um, that power bank promotion as well. Um, pop your, your questions in there and I will go through anything that you sort of uh, haven't seen, guys. Be really, um, and then also, don't forget to check out um, Talking Shot podcast. Um, it's a lighthearted look at the photography and filmmaking industry. It's got stuff on color management, it's got on venture filmmaking about lockdown, everything like that. So make sure you go and check that out as well. There's lots of good info about that. If you want to drop me a message, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, web, crikey, that's almost getting old, or, or you can obviously, uh, talking shot, you can go and check that as well. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, by all means, guys. Um, again, if you've got some more questions, pop them in the question and answers, and um, I'll certainly answer those right now for you um, and I hope you've really enjoyed that. Keep an eye out for the discount code guys for Wix as well which is coming up but thank you very much for having me guys it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed shooting portraits on location. You will see now in the in the box the promotion. I'm still here for a bit, guys. Ah, thanks, Gabriel. That's really nice. Um, it's really nice. <laughs> I've been working on my color and tones for years, um, Gabriel. So um, it's just something which is completely evolving. I do recommend if you love your color, there is on YouTube the uh, one of the producers from Joker talks about how they used color. And that's really work having a lot. So can I please share the previous slide, of course? There you go. There's a lot of information packed in there, guys. So um, if you take something away, that's made my day. Anna's a good question. What is my favorite light source of light, natural or otherwise? Gosh, that's really hard. Um, it depends what I'm trying to achieve, I guess. Um, make things i can be more creative um with controlled light or a studio light um you have no control over natural light but you can a little bit with a reflector um or you can just as you've seen in the photos here be creative and position the person so they're getting feathered so for ease of use i guess i would say natural but for creative for creativity um, I would say um, flash or studio lights. Um, that's very Swiss of me, isn't it? To um, say both, but I do, I do like both. I, I do like keeping the things open. Um, question from Nick: Who's my main clientele? Um, the general public. Um, I also do workshops one to one. So I started out as a wedding photographer. Then I've gone to corporate um, and commercial work. Um, I do. Portrait work for lots of families. I've got um, many clients from over the years. So uh, my main 
clients, uh, the general public. Um, and that's where I get the biggest kick. I get the biggest kick when people send me a photo of my work hanging on their wall. That is the best thing ever. Um, and final question from Danielle. Do I go into a shoot thinking of a specific theme or is it something that comes to you on site? Um, with, with what you've just seen, we went and uh, non actually stylized the whole shoot. She picked the clothes out, she helped with locations. So that was themed around those because we knew we were going to the cinema. So we wanted reds and warms, uh, colors like that. And they worked really, really well. So um, I do try to plan. Um, but you've got to have a plan B because sometimes it's not going to work. You may turn up to a location and things have changed or they're not how you expected them, so you've got to have a plan B. But yes, I do go into a shoot thinking of a specific theme or and, and that sort of end result on how it's going to look. So that sort of cinematic sort of look was what I wanted and that bright, vibrant red. And yeah, so I do go into it. So thank you again, everyone. Absolutely loved having you on tonight. And I hope to see you again soon.